Hello, welcome to the video that will be a first of its kind on this channel, but definitely not the last. Um, you know, when I first thought about doing a video like this, uh, there wasn't a question in my mind that this is exactly what this channel is meant to do, uh, to help you guys. So um, this video is based on a question that I got from Dennis. Now, the question was, how do you create running tools in Power Query, but with a big uh, add-in, and that is to create year-to-date running totals, right? With a special add-in of fiscal years, All right? So in this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, I'm gonna pretend that my fiscal year starts with April. Right, so I'm going to start with April and then go all the way to March next year. And that will be my year. And what I'm looking for is how to calculate a running total within that. So what I did here is I already prepared the solution uh, because this video would be way too long if I did the solution and try to explain it at the same time. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain it, what it does, and I'm going to show you the solution so Dennis here you go uh, when Dennis initially uh, wrote this in the comment section I said well wouldn't it be easier to just do it in you know in power pivot with DAX right because that's what it's meant to do uh, total YTD or dates YTD with calculate that's that's what they're meant to do they even have a space right for that what is your end year date right uh, but he said he needs to do it in Power Query because he needs to do some other transformation with it. So here it is. We're starting with the simplest of simplest that we need for this example. And that is we have months, dates corresponding to months and values for those months. Right. Um, obviously, if we're going to do year to date, we need those dates and then to create a running total. And the end result will be something like this, right? And, and initially it will look kind of strange because the first day that we have is actually January of uh, 2021, whereas the end result has three months way back in 2020. Uh, but the reason is that's just the label I gave to the year which these three belong to, right? Because these three are actually previous year. We're doing fiscal years. This is where the year starts. And this one in my book is called 2021. It's actually D's. And then this one is 2020. So here's what you get. You get 2020. These are the values that we have. And these are the running totals that we get. And then with April, we start over. Right? That's over here. And these are the numbers that we have. And here we have the running totals. Now, the key here, the key here is creating these labels correctly. For two reasons. These will be my categories or groupings that I need. Those are my years. I need those. And then these are very important. Now, these are actually wrong because this one should be October, November and December. Uh, but if they were October, November, December, so if this one was 10, 11, 12, this would actually be wrong. And let me just explain that as we go along. So we start with the data and all I did was I pulled in this data and this is where half of the magic already happens in Power Query over here. So I pulled in this data and then what we need is we need those labels, those years, those months, right? Of course, we're going to get those from the date. So Basically, I went at column from date and I did year and month. So I inserted the year. There it is. Nothing special about that. I sort of reordered it just so the values were at the end. Doesn't matter. And I inserted the month, right? And then this is where it kind of gets tricky, right? Uh, so the month over here, you're already going to see that it's 
it's looking very, very weird, right? And it's looking weird because I added something here, right? And what I added was this. So basically the month would give me this, right? Months as we expect them to. So January 1, February 2. And then what you need to do with fiscal years is to do this, to get your month that you need as the starting number to be 12. That's where you need it, right? So if four was my starting number, all I did here was I did plus eight. There it is, right? So this is what I started with. And then I went on and I added a custom So it's only custom column, which where I did the year times 12 plus this month minus 12. So the minus 12 would actually be nonsense, but it, it isn't because it's the nine that you added before minus the month that would be last. So that, that number does make sense. Now this one, is extremely important because this what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get the years corrected right so these years we're trying to get those to fall into the right line right so what we did here is we said year times 12 this is something that I I explained very well in the a while back I did a calendar series and part four of that part four is extending the the calendar table the day table and that's where i explain why this is the most important column because it enables a whole bunch of things and over here we also need the same column and what we do with this column is we integer divide it so integer divide is just divide it with a number and the number will be 12 and then just give me the whole part of what you get right so the deal here was I needed these to fall into 2020, right? And over here, I already have the correct years, right? So 2021 is now a fiscal year from April of 2021 all the way to March 2022. So this is a very important column. But then if I go back, the month column is also going to create problems for me right now. And the reason it's going to create problems for me is because the 9, 10, and 11 over here are not what I need. So I'm going to do a couple more things. First of all, this you saw that this was actually weird right because it did uh, 12 over here whereas it should be one um, so what i did here is i calculated a module of 12 right so divide by 12 and give me just the remainder and what it did again there's a bit of magic here uh, what it did is it did this but there's no month zero right in in the calendar so all you do is you say yeah do that but give it a plus one and what this does is here's the first month of my 2021 fiscal year and this is my 12th month of the 2020 fiscal year so this was more or less what i started with i removed some of the other columns i reordered them but this is basically it. So a date, year, month, and this. And then I went onwards to this. So I started with this one. And then to begin with, I needed to do this. I needed to group by years. So I just did a simple group by, group by years, where I did this. So I said year, transform group by, and... Yeah, well, let's, let's show it as is. So group by year, but what I did down here is I just said all rows. So what it actually does is it groups by a year and then it gives you 
a whole table belonging so sort of filtered to that year. Um, I'm going to cancel this out, but what this did, right? It gave me 2020, but that's actually these three rows. And it gave me 2021, and that's actually these rows. Right? But then I also did two other things, extremely important. The first one is I calculated how many months are within that year, right? That's here. That's count rows. So all rows, count rows, and then I also wanted to know what was the minimum of month, right? This is the minimum of month. And where the minimum is one, I have no concerns. Where the minimum is 10, that one concerns me deeply. So what I need to do is I need this 10 to somehow be a one. So what I will do next, and that's my added custom, right? Is I need to figure out how do I make this 10 a one and all the others a one if I needed to. And basically what you do is you just take this one and subtract one, right? So this is what I need to subtract from my month. So I will get a one, two, three um, order. And then I expand it over, but now I have all these columns again. So I remove those that I don't need, but what I really need is this and this, right? Here's what I need to subtract from my months to get the months working correctly. Now I could still still have this month be present, right? Um, and it would work, but I just chose not to in the end. You should, you really should. Um, anyways, so I added a custom simple, just take month, subtract this and removed month, removed that one, and this became my month, right? And now here's where it gets really cool. So I removed some columns, I did the grouping again, right? So this is my 2020, 2021. And what is key here is now I have one, two, three over here, whereas before I had 10, 11, 12. Now, the reason I need one is in the end, I'm going to do this with a simple function that does something like this. So here I did it a very simple uh, <clears throat> kind of test of it. And you can see why 10, 11, 12 would not work. So here's the function that we're going to use in the end. So we're going to say, look, I need you to do a list sum. So create a list and then do a sum of it. The list is list range source value. So just list those values. That is your list, right? But then the month tells you how many values you need to include in your running total. And if over here, if you look at it over here, so the list for 2021 would be all of this, right? But what does this one do? It says, take that one value. Now, this is a very bad example because the one value is, it still takes this whole list. So the one value is actually 65. There it is. The two value is actually 65 plus seven, right? And that's 72. The free value and so on and so on. And do you notice what happened over here where you would expect to have only 65? you're actually getting 559, which is the same as you're getting over here. Why? Because it's summing up the first 10 values of that, right? So that's why we needed these to be one, two, three, even though they're months 10, 11, and 12. We needed one, two, three, so they would calculate this, this plus this, and then this plus this plus this. Otherwise they would all be more or less uh, huge numbers but not doing what we want them to. Okay, so here's where we are at. And this is where the, uh, the magic happens. And let me just show you the magic because I wrapped it up in a sweet little function. So let me just make that a bit smaller. There it is. Okay, 
So we're up to here, right? This is where we did our uh, grouped rows. And then we're doing a function that is working with a table. And what it's going to take is those tables, right? So it's a function that takes a table and, and it does exactly the running totals that I showed you there, right? For each table, that's the key here for each table. So for each year, it's going to do a running total. And we already passed the point where our years are exactly what we need, right? And that's why this will work so brilliantly. So if I now show you what this does, the next step, running total, okay, that's my function. And then what it does is it creates this. So it takes the table that it was before. So over here, we had the table ending with month. And now it adds a extra column running total right and then i just expanded it all and this is what we get so for 2020 we have those three years which were actually 10 11 12 you should leave that column with just so you'll have it at the end um, or leave the date doesn't matter uh, but either way for those three we have running totals right over here all right these are our values these are the running totals and then for 2021, which is actually April of 2021, it starts over because that's the first month of our fiscal year. Starts with 92, and then it goes on to build the running totals. Okay. Now, Dennis, I hope I know this will help you. I'm hoping this will help a whole lot of other people who are trying to do the same thing. Uh, running totals in Power Query is not easy. Now, running totals by categories is even harder to do. Running totals by categories where you need to index them all together differently by dates, that's the hardest thing to do. So there you have it. Uh, hope this helps you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.